Face here back with another reaction video. This time reacting to Battle of of Fralstadt, seventeen oh six, Swedish invasion of Poland by um, kings and generals. This is part of their Great Northern War War documentary. So if you haven't must if you haven't sorry if you haven't seen my reaction to the first two episodes, I suggest you check them out before checking this one out. And um, yeah, please also support kings and generals. So. Um, so the usual disclaimer when I react to anything historical, if I don't show so much what is considered a proper reaction, it's probably obvious that I don't know much about the subject at hand and if I um excuse me. If I if I do know anything I'll most likely pause the video, give my input, or hopefully um well, most likely answer ask curious questions which hopefully should be answered in the comments below. So with so the link to the original video will be in the description down down below. Please go and subscribe to Kings and Generals, another great uh, history channel here on YouTube. And um, so that's not much more I can say. Let's get this up on screen and let's get into this. And also check out their sponsors if you're interested. In the beginning of the Great Northern War, it seemed that Sweden was isolated by its enemies that would soon win the conflict. Mm. However, by the middle of 1702, it proved to be anything but, as Charles XII, the soldier mm. king of Sweden, had defeated all of his mm -hmm. initial opponents in battle and was close to total domination. As the Swedish victories mounted, so did her enemies' eagerness to dismantle the empire. Wow. Just as the King of Poland, Augustus II, was licking his wounds after the mm -hmm. defeat at Klisov, the Russian bear came out of its winter slumber and began planning its next attack. The good news is that you don't need a time machine to experience historical epic warfare. The sponsor of this video, Epic War Thrones, is a free-to-play, massively wow. multiplayer, real-time strategy game where millions of players take the role of feudal lords to control mm. a mysterious and wondrous land in a Grand Eastern setting, in control okay. of their progression through expansion, annexation, alliance building, and much more. It combines a gripping strategy campaign of empire building and conquest with thrilling real-time battles. Made in Unreal Engine 4, Epic War Thrones brings PC-level experiences to mobile, allowing you to battle in 3D. There are more than 20 terrain for Hero has different skills okay. and behavior. Feel free to check them out if you're interested. Very deep. Support our channel and exp the description. Following the Battle of Klisov, the Swedish army advanced towards mm. Krakow, while Augustus fled to Sandomierz. Mm. The governor of Krakow was unwilling to surrender <coughs> his city without a fight. However, he changed his mind after a Swedish display of force in mm. front of the city walls. A couple of weeks later, a 12,000 strong Swedish army from Pomerania okay. arrived in Krakow as well. Augustus, seeing the gravity of the situation, left mm -hmm. Sandomierz with 4,000 cavalry and advanced towards Warsaw to retake it. He had hoped to call for wow. another diet and gather military and financial support from the nobility. The Diet did not go according to his plans though, mm -hmm. as an increasing number of noblemen voiced their dissatisfaction with the fact that Augustus involved the Commonwealth in the war. Mm. Several noblemen even threatened to openly back Charles in the conflict. Growing more desperate, Augustus sent countless envoys to the Swedish king in the autumn of 1702. However, Charles mm. would not accept any of the terms that were offered. Fearing that all of his offers to Charles would go unanswered, Augustus begged for the aid of his liege via the electorate of Saxony, the Holy Roman Emperor. Leopold I acquiesced, though his motives were not as selfless as they seemed, as wow. the treaty he offered Charles stipulated that Sweden and Poland would end all hostilities and mm. that all Saxon troops would leave to join the Imperial Army in the War of the Spanish Succession. Wow. The young king dismissed even this offer, as he was determined to defeat Augustus completely. Mm. By 1703, Augustus was forced to flee Warsaw again, while Charles continued consolidating his position in Poland. 
although we have neglected this theatre of war for some time, hmm. it is time to return to Ingria and Estonia. As Charles turned southwards after the Battle okay. of Nava, Tsar Peter was given some much needed time to reinforce and improve hmm. the Russian army. Boris Sheremetev, the only Russian commander to have escaped after the Battle of Nava, was given command over the Russian forces in the north. Hmm. Small raids into Estonia and Ingria were conducted regularly wow. during 1701, but they were not decisive by any means. The first serious attempt to probe the Swedish defences in the area was made in September, when Sheremetev led a 7,000-strong army into Estonia. However, von Schlippenbach intercepted the Russian advance mm. with a three times smaller army and defeated Sheremetev at Reuj. Wow. Sheremetev made another attempt with a much larger army under him and advanced into Estonia again in January 1702. Mm. Schlippenbach, this time outnumbered 6 to 1, gave battle at Arestva and was forced to retreat after sustaining heavy casualties. After Arestva, the Russians faced almost no significant opposition in the area and were able to advance deep into Ingria. In the autumn of 1702, the main Russian army, under the command of Peter himself, reached the Swedish fort of Notbori. As the Russians had lost all of their artillery at the Battle of Nava two years prior, they made an extraordinary effort to replace their lost and outdated artillery pieces, even going as far as to melt down church bells for material. Wow. The new Russian artillery corps was quite effective. <coughs> the Swedish garrison of Notbori, although mounting a serious defence, was forced to surrender after heavy bombardment and continuous assaults. The Swedish commander gave Peter the key to the city, which symbolised that Notbori was the key to the Neva River. Peter, mm. recognising that as well, renamed the city to Schlüsselburg and placed it under the wow. command of his most trusted general, Menshikov. The siege, though relatively short, left the Russian army exhausted Mm. and the Tsar's desire to repair and improve the fort gave them some time to recover. Charles was aware of the situation in the north, however he did not see the Russian advances as a significant threat and continued pursuing his goals in Poland. As the campaigning season of 1703 began, the Russian army left Schlüsselburg and advanced towards the mouth of the river Neva. The mouth of the river was guarded by a fort called Nienkrenz, Hearing that the Russian army was approaching, the Swedish garrison burned the fort to the ground. Wow. Peter the Great captured what was left of Nienkentz on the 1st of May, and on the 27th decided to found a new city there, Russia's future capital, St. Petersburg. Okay. In order to build the superior city and the fortresses around it, tens of thousands of serfs were forcefully brought mm. to St. Petersburg. Along with them, Peter also invited many architects, engineers and shipwrights from Western Europe to help him build the city of his dreams. These extraordinary efforts seem to have paid off, as by 1704 St. Petersburg began sprawling outwards from the main fortress, and two new fortresses were mm. built alongside it. There were several Swedish attempts at reconquering the city in the next few years, however all of them were unsuccessful. Back in Poland, Charles managed to obtain the support of enough of the Polish nobility to have wow. Stanisław Leszczyński crowned as the new king. Mm. On the other hand, Augustus still mounted a significant resistance as he controlled the majority of the Polish army. The Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth subsequently descended into chaos as the Sandomierz Confederation, led by Augustus, and the Warsaw Confederation, led by Stanisław, began fighting a brutal civil war. Due to the chaotic nature of the conflict, forts and cities continuously changed hands between the two confederations and Sweden, and it's difficult to discern who controlled several mm. parts of the Commonwealth at different points in time. In the summer of 1704, the Swedish fort of Nava fell to the Russian army, after a much more effective blockade and siege than four years earlier. It was at Nava that Peter signed a treaty with Augustus, granting the Saxon monarch significant subsidies, 12,000 Russian soldiers, and lands in Ruthenia in exchange for staying in the war. Over mm. the next year, 
the Russians and Saxons had devised a strategy to defeat the Swedish army and expel Charles from Poland. The Grodno campaign, as it later became known, aimed to capture the Swedish forces in a pincer movement with a three-sided offensive from Lithuania, Ruthenia and Saxony. Charles was not sitting idly either, and by the summer of 1705, he had convinced the Diet in Warsaw to start working on a peace treaty and to crown Stanislaw as king. As what was going on in Warsaw was seen as a possible catastrophe for mm. Augustus's war effort, not to mention the fact that it represented a significant hit to his pride, he knew that he had to act quickly. A large Saxon cavalry force was sent to assault Warsaw and to stop the coronation of Stanislaw. Augustus's reckless endeavor ended in a complete disaster, as the force was defeated by a much smaller Swedish army and its commander was captured. Furthermore, the Saxon commander also divulged the strategic intentions of Augustus and his allies, allowing the Swedes to thoroughly prepare for the upcoming Grodno campaign. As the majority of Livonia and Estonia wow. were under Russian control by the beginning of the campaign, <coughs> the main Russian army, along with large Saxon and Polish-Lithuanian contingents, wow. set up four winter quarters at the fort of Grodno mm. in Ruthenia. They expected a quick victory over the Swedish army after the campaigning season of 1706 began. However, they did not even get the chance to try. Much like his mm. predecessor, Gustavus Adolphus, Charles force marched his army in the dead of winter and arrived wow. at Grodno on the 24th of January. Lacking the artillery to assault the fort, Charles opted to cross the frozen Neman River and blockade the city. Seeing that the young king was preparing to encircle them, Augustus immediately left with 5,000 men, mm. hoping to reinforce his army in Saxony. Peter, unwilling to bring the rest of his army to relieve the siege, ordered Menchikov to leave the fort with the cavalry mm. as soon as possible. Grodno fell in April, and the Russians lost wow. more than a third of their initial force. They would have lost even more had Charles not misjudged the direction of Menchikov's retreat. Mm. Unable to pursue the Russian army through the thick marshlands of Palesia, Charles went westwards to seek a battle with mm. the Saxons. As Charles was busy with the siege, Augustus had prepared to advance towards Warsaw. He led a 7,000-strong cavalry force, while the main body of the Saxon-Polish army was commanded by Schulenberg. A third Saxon army under Brausser was also advancing mm. from Krakow. Schulenberg crossed the Oder on the 8th of February and advanced towards the town of Suava in Silesia. While this was taking place, Reinschild was resting in his winter quarters, which extended from Kostin to the border with Brandenburg. Mm. No sooner had he learned of the Saxon advance, he assembled his army and began marching towards the Oder. After discovering the movements of both Schulenberg and Brausser, Reinschild mm. deduced that the two of them planned to avoid open battle with him and join forces at Poznan. To avoid any surprises, the Swedish commander retreated the same way from which he came and made sure to spread the word at every town and village that he was retreating and hoping to avoid open battle. Okay. Reinschild's information warfare proved successful, as Schulenberg gave credit to the rumors of a Swedish retreat and decided to pursue the Swedish army instead of advancing towards Poznan. The Saxon general believed that the mere presence of his superior army would be enough to rout the Swedish force. With this strategy, Reinschild achieved two things. He drew Schulenberg's army away from any Allied forces and was able to choose a site of battle that was optimal for the Swedish army's size mm. and composition. Upon both armies reaching the Fraustadt on the 13th of February, Reinschild started arraying his army in battle formation. It was at this point that Schulenberg realized that he had been deceived However, he had to give battle, as it would have been... I was wondering if this was a deception tactic, you know, spreading the word that, you know, he was retreating to lure, lure the, the superior the superior sized army into an ambush, or... Uh, but, but to pick a battlefield of his choosing. 
between Fraustadt and Jägersdorf and Rosdorf. I am so sorry if those pronunciations are wrong. Scandalous for him to retreat mm. with such a superior force. Yeah. The Saxon force was around oh, yeah, twenty thousand strong, with around ten thousand wow. Saxon and six thousand Russian infantry and four thousand Saxon cavalrymen. Mm. Schulenberg assembled his infantry into two columns between the villages of Jägersdorf and Rosdorf, and in front of it he placed thirty-one cannons, forty-four mortars, and a chevaux de frise. Two thousand Saxon mm. horsemen were placed on either wing. Reinschild had only 9,400 men at his disposal, with 3,700 infantry and 5,700 cavalry. Well, so he placed his like cavalry two on the or flanks three to one. and the majority of his infantry in a single line in the center, while some Karelians were also mixed in among the cavalry. <clears throat> Axel Sparra commanded the infantry in the center, while Hummerhelm led the left and Reinschild himself was in charge of the right. As the Swedish army advanced, the Saxons waited until their enemies were at about 100 paces distance, then they fired all of their cannons and mortars. Although the Swedish army suffered some casualties during mm. this barrage, they did not give the Saxons enough time for another one, as the centre mm. and left started their charge. The Swedish centre's advance was at first checked by the chevaux de frise, however, after less than 15 minutes, the Swedish forces oh. broke through. The Swedes, who were expertly trained at hand-to-hand -hand combat, mm. charged their Saxon counterparts with swords and did not fire a single shot. In spite of being under constant fire, yeah. the ferocious Karolian onslaught forced the Saxons to retreat towards the village of Bersen. Mm. The Swedish wings had even more success, as the numerically inferior Saxon cavalry began fleeing after just several minutes mm. of fighting. Only a handful of cavalry on the Saxon right, led by Colonel Kospot, mounted a desperate defence. However, they were surrounded and broken after the rest of their wing fell. The Swedish right afterwards came upon the 6,000 Russian soldiers. The Russians had their uniforms turned inside out, as Schulenberg knew that they were inexperienced and Reinschild would target them. Their weakness was revealed, though. The Russians fired only one volley at the Swedes before wow. throwing down their arms and retreating be hit behind from the, the wall of from spikes. The After removing the chevaux de frise there, Reinschild chased down the entire Russian force and massacred them all. As all of the Saxon cavalry had fled, their Swedish counterparts were now mm -hmm. free to surround the remainder of oh, the yeah. army on all sides. Much like Hannibal, almost two millennia before him, mm -hmm. Reinschild executed a double envelopment perfectly, forcing the remainder wow. of the Saxon army to surrender. And with that, the entire Saxon army, raised with so much toil, care and expense, and which was twice the size of the Swedish army, had been defeated in less than an hour's time. Wow. The Saxons lost more than 7,000 men during the battle <coughs> itself. Isn't the average battle of this uh, sort of uh, scale usually like six, about up to six hours? I'm probably wrong again, but I'm pretty sure. I've never heard, I've never seen a battle go so quick. And had almost all of the rest imprisoned, with the well. total losses amounting to about fifteen thousand to sixteen thousand. The Swedes lost around four hundred men mm. and also had around one thousand men injured. Augustus's biggest problem, however, was that the road to Saxony now lay wide open and undefended. Mm -hmm. Augustus, who linked up with Brausser and had 12,000 men at his disposal, was only 80 kilometers away from Fraustadt when the battle took place. Shocked at the news of his Grand Army's complete defeat at the hands of an inferior Swedish force, Augustus hastily retreated to Krakow. Since Peter the Great was unwilling to send his army to even relieve the siege of Grodno, wow. there wasn't any hope of Russian aid for them either. After his victory at Grodno, Charles XII turned west to prepare for the upcoming invasion mm -hmm. of Saxony. In the next few months, Augustus desperately tried to negotiate a peace with Charles, even offering to split up the Commonwealth between himself and Stanislaw. As autumn began, 
the Swedish armies marched into Saxony and quickly occupied Leipzig. Without any other options, Augustus agreed to all Swedish demands and mm. signed the Treaty of Eltrenstadt. According to the treaty, he would renounce all of his claims to the Polish and Lithuanian crowns, annul treaties with Russia, and extradite the Swedish traitor Johann Patkul. Um. In order to humiliate his personal enemy, Charles also forced Augustus to congratulate Stanislaw on his victory mm. and coronation. In only six years, the young and capable Charles XII eliminated two of his three enemies. The time had finally come that he would turn his attention to Russia. Hmm. The Great Northern War was entering its most critical stage. Our series will continue in the coming weeks, so make sure you are subscribed and have pressed the bell button to see it. Please consider liking, commenting and sharing, it helps immensely. Our videos would be impossible without our kind patrons and YouTube channel members to our videos, access our Discord and much more. This is the Kings and Generals channel, and we will catch you on the next and one. And I'll do it. This has been another great video by Kings and Generals, and um, yeah, it was like um, oops. Again, not this, 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 this war is not really much spoken about. So, um, well, not in my opinion, anyway. So, um, so it'll be interesting what the next episode would bring so when um the swedish forces under charles the second um when the swedish king attacks russia so see how, see how that turns out so so anyway this is this has been an interesting video if you like this reaction please like comment and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one